Now, dear students, let us discuss some questions from the West Bengal State Eligibility Test. Now, in this case, I have taken the 2017 Computer Science and Application Question Paper from West Bengal SET exam, which is also called as WBSET. Now, the first question that we are discussing is from programming part. So, they are saying that uh, we have four sets P, which is having tri, not an union, Q, which is having and, bit and, and complex, X, which is auto, go to, and if, and Z, which is int, void, and not. Now, they are saying which of the following is correct. Number one, Element in P are C++ keywords. Element in Q are C++ keywords. Element in X are C keywords only, but those Z are not. And elements in X and also Z are C keywords. So they are asking uh, which of the following sets is actually containing the keyword from the C language. Now for this, you should know what is the character keyword set for the C language. Actually, C language is very, very easy uh, because it is having the minimalistic, minimalistic keyword set, minimal. As compared to any other language, whether it is C++, whether it is Java, whether it is .NET or any other language, C language contains the least number of keywords, which are approximately 32. Now, in case of C++, all these 32 keywords are there. But a part of this, we have some extra new keywords that they have added in the C++ because C++ is just an incrementation over the C language. Now, you can see uh, in this video, I have taken the keywords which are present in both C language as well as the C++ language. In both the cases, these keywords exist, which are auto, break, case, char, const, continue, default, do, double, else, enum, extern, float, for, go to, if, and so on like this. Now, let us look at uh, this set. Let us try to see what are the keywords which are existing in uh, C++, which are, ex which are not in C language. So, let us try to see keywords that are not in C language. Okay, so first keyword is try. So can you see try keyword here? You can clearly see that try keyword is not there. So this keyword try is not present in C language. Now this keyword not is also not present in C language. If you can find any keyword here, then that is present in C language. Okay, as well as the keyword union, it is present in C language because union is present in here. But this try and not these two keywords are not present in the C language. Next, in the case of Q, and keyword you can see and keyword is not present in the C language. Bit and bit and keyword is also not present in the C language. A uh, complex keyword is uh, you can see it is not present in the C language. So uh, in P set P and set Q uh, they are not containing any keyword which is present in C language. The only keyword that they are containing is union. It is the only keyword which is present in C language. Now, in case of X, this auto keyword is actually, uh, as you can see, this auto keyword is present. Go to keyword, uh, this go to keyword here, it is also present. As well as if keyword, this if keyword is also present in the C language. So, this entire set is present in the C language. Okay. In the set Z, int, void, and not. Int is present in C language. Void is present in C language, but not is not present. So, you can see void is here. Okay and int is here. These keywords are present. So, this set X is containing all the keywords which are present in the C language. Okay, now let us look at for the C++. Obviously, any keyword uh, which is present in C++, I mean C++ contains all the C keywords, which, is, which are the 32 keywords, plus some extra keywords. Now, you can see try keyword is present in C++. Try is present in C++. And this not, not keyword you can clearly see here. This not keyword is not present in C++ and union is present. Why? Because union we have seen in the previous slide here that union is present but not is not at all present. In the next case, we have and keyword and uh, this and keyword is not present in the C++ and bit and is also not present in C++ and this complex keyword it is also not present. All these three keywords are present in C++. Int is present, void is present and not is not present. So, this X is the only set which is having, this is the only set which is having the keywords which are present in C language as well as which are present in C++. But these th other sets are not uh, having any keyword which is present. I mean, they may be having some keywords which are not present in any of these languages. So, the first option is saying element in PR C++ keyword which is wrong because here uh, we do not have the keyword not. 
element in q or c plus plus keyword which is wrong why because here and bitand and complex none of these keywords is present in c plus plus element in x or c keyword only but those in z are not that is correct because in case of z this keyword is not present and element in x and also in z or c keyword this is wrong because here we have not keyword which is not present in c language so the answer to this question is option number c so i think you don't even need to remember this table you don't even need to remember this table because by practice after some time you'll find out that you can easily get the information um, you can easily remember what are the keywords which are present and what are the keywords which are not present okay the next question is from dbms it is saying for a dbms to be used it must minimally support which of the following operation and which of the following is correct now see in case of dbms uh, dbms is generated using algebra which is also called as relational algebra relational algebra now this relational algebra is having two kinds of operations number one those are fundamental operations fundamental operation and second one those are derived operations which are also called as non fundamental operation non fundamental why we call it them as not fundamental because these operations can be derived from the fundamental operations only so fundamental operations are the operations which are absolutely necessary to be in the relational algebra so the fundamental operation is select which is also represented like this the next fundamental operation is project which is represented like this next is cartesian product cartesian product which is represented by x next is union which is represented by u next is set difference which is represented by minus sign and the last one is the rename keyword rename which is presented like this in the derived form we have the natural join it can be derived from the fundamental operations natural join can be derived from the fundamental operations the next one is the intersection this intersection can be derived from the fundamental operations the third one is the assignment operator this assignment can be derived from the fundamental operations and the fourth one here is the division or quotient operation division or quotient operation and this division quotient operation is a fundamental non not fundamental operation and the fifth one is the theta join and this theta join is also not fundamental operation because it is just a generalized form generalized form of natural join of natural join now they are asking here in this question which of the following must be minimally minimalistically supported or minimally it should be there so these are the keywords which are minimally should be there so select keyword should be there so as you can see here the first case select keyword is there union keyword is there but intersection is not minimalistic because intersection can be derived from the fundamental operations only next select should be there union can be there and this join can be derived from the fundamental operation next select should be there project should be there and join it can be derived next select should be there project should be there and union should be there so answer is option number here point 4 is correct because this is the minimal set here and this is option number a option number a is correct for this and i feel the option which is given in the op official answers because in the official answers i have seen that they have given option number c and this option number c is actually wrong in official answers so option answers you can uh, get it corrected over there uh, but i feel the correct answer is option number a for this given question now in the next case they are saying uh, they are giving four languages which is language l1 l2 l3 and l4 out of these languages we have machines for the language l1 we have machine m1 for this language we have machine m1 for the second language we have machine m2 for third language we have machine m3 and the fourth language we have machine m4 they are saying the machines recognize the language l1 l2 l3 and l4 respectively which one is correct number 1 m1 and m2 are push down automatas but m3 and m4 are not now here for this we can make a push down automata that is correct for this uh, we can make a push down automata that is correct okay so n1 and l2 are having push down automatas now they are saying m3 and m4 are not now in case of l3 we cannot create a pd push down automata so this is correct but l4 for this l4 we can make a push down automata right so for l4 language for this we can make a push down automata so for l1 l2 and l4 push down automata exist and for the language l3 
this Turing machine exists for language L3. We do not have pushdown automata. We cannot create a pushdown automata for the language L3. Option number B is saying M2 and M3 are pushdown automata, but we we can clearly see that M3 cannot be we can cannot make a pushdown automata for M3. So option number A and B are wrong. Option number C is saying all M1, M2, M3, M4 are PDS, which is also wrong because for language L2 we cannot create. Uh, sorry, language L3 we cannot create. Okay, we cannot create M3 for pushdown automata, but option number D is correct, which is saying for language L1, L2, and L4 pushdown automata does exist. Next case, consider x as an n bit number, which is the power of two, uh, which power k of two. Then sum of x and x minus one contains j zeros where. Okay, so what does they really mean? When they are saying the power k of two, that means that means whatever number this x is showing. For example, this x is a n bit number like this. It is a n bit number from here to here. Correct. And it is a power of two. That means it should be somewhere two raised to power k. Now you can clearly see if you represent two raised to power zero, how you can represent this? Two raised to power one can be represented how much? I mean, how you can represent all these powers of two? Because if you represent all these powers of two, then you can easily solve these questions. If we have total, uh, assume eight bits. Now two raised to power zero can be represented like this: total of eight zeros. Uh, sorry, total of seven zeros and one here. 2 to the power 1 can be represented like this. We have total of these many zeros. Uh, this is 4 zero and uh, yeah, something like this. So this is 4 zero, right? So these are total of 8 bits. 2 to the power 2 can be represented like this: 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 0. 2 to the power 3 can be represented like this: 2 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0. 2 to the power 4 can be represented like this: 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0. Okay. So whatever the power is. For example, if we have the power 4, that means we have 4 zeros. If we have the power 3, that means we have 3 zeros here. If we have the power 2, that means we have 2 zeros here. If we have the power 1 that we have, that means we have 1 zero in the right hand side here. Okay. Now, if I find it out, 2 raised to power k minus 1. Okay, so this is representing 2 raised to power k and for 2 raised to power k minus 1. If I do 2 raised to power 0 minus 1, 2 raised to power 1 minus 1. 2 raised to power 2 minus 1, 2 raised to power 3 minus 1, and 2 raised to power 4 minus 1. Okay. Why? Because you can clearly see here when uh, they are giving this question. Now, for this particular question, x is representing a uh, power k of 2 that they are writing. Okay. Because consider x is an n bit number, which is power k of 2. And x minus 1 is actually uh, minus 1 from this. So, if this 2 raised to power k is x, so this will be x minus 1. So uh, 2 to the power 0 minus 1 is all 8 zeros. Okay, 2 to the power 1 minus 1 is uh, we have total of uh, these many zeros, 4 and like this. Correct? 2 to the power 2 minus 1 means we have a 1, 2, 3, 4 and we have 0, 0, 1, 1 which is representing number 3. This is representing number 1 and this is representing number 0. 2 to the power uh, 3 minus 1 is 7, which is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. 2 to the power 4 minus 1 is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so this is we have a correlation that in case in this particular case, whatever number of zeros we have here, we have exactly the same number of ones on the right hand side, otherwise, all the other digits are zeros. Okay, now they are saying uh, if we have the sum of x and x minus 1. Right. For example, x can be represented by any one of these. So assuming that x is like this, 0, 0, 0, 0, there are some zeros and they have 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. So when they are saying that it is 2 raised to power k, that means here we have uh, k zeros and all the other bits are here. So if total number of bits here, total number of bits are n, then in x will be having uh, 2 raised to power, uh, sorry, x will be having n uh, total n bits so where k bits are 0 the k plus 1th bit is 1 otherwise all the other bits are zeros on the right hand side here okay now in x minus 1 we have all the zeros here all the zeros here only these k bits are 1 only these k bits are 1 okay so in total if you add both this x and x minus 1 so it will be uh, 1 1 1 1 
one 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 up to so on and then we have zeros now you answer me how many ones will be there so these are total of uh, k ones okay these are total of k ones and then we have one more extra one so which is representing k plus ones are there and rest all the bits are zero so in total if we have n bits out of these n bits these many bits are ones then how many zeros are there there are n minus of k plus one which is representing n minus k minus one okay so answer is n minus k minus one which is option number a and that is the correct answer for this given question i hope that you understood this one and this i feel that you really enjoyed this question i also enjoyed solving this one now let us look at the question number five they are saying consider the following tree we have a tree here and they are saying which one is correct i mean which of the following tree is actually representing a heap heap means uh, root either root will be containing we have two types of heap actually that i should tell you first of all heap either we can have a max heap or we can have a min heap okay so max heap means root always contain the maximum data so in every subtree root always contain the maximum data now here let us check the tree number one so in the first tree out of all the data this is the maximum data that is correct now here also it is containing root is containing the maximum data that is correct so t1 is representing a max heap so t1 is representing a heap max heap in case of t2 in the entire tree this is the maximum data that is correct in this entire tree this is the maximum data uh, that is correct but the problem is this is not a almost complete binary tree okay so heaps are generally almost complete binary trees only now because this is not representing almost complete binary tree that is why it is not a heap even though every root node is contain, containing the maximum data but just because root is not containing this is this tree is not a almost complete binary tree so that that is why it is not a heap so it is not representing a heap now in case of uh, t3 first of all it is represent it is a almost complete binary tree that is correct now this is following the heap property this subtree is also following the heap property but this subtree is also following the heap property so uh, all the subtrees are following the heap property therefore this is a heap so t3 is also representing a heap so the only tree that is not a heap is t2 now option number a is wrong because it is saying all the trees are heap that is wrong option number b is also wrong because t2 is not a heap option number c is wrong because t3 is representing a heap option number d is correct because uh, t1 and t3 both of them are representing the heaps okay so option number 3 is correct here i hope that you understood this one let us look, look at next one in mixed mode arithmetic operation an integer is converted to floating point form in the following phases of a typical compiler generally what are the phases of the compiler first of all we have the phase which is lexical analysis we have lexical analysis we give a high level language program to lexical analysis which gives a stream of tokens now from this lexical analysis we give it to syntax analyzer now from this syntax analyzer we get a pass tree which we give to semantic analyzer semantic analyzer from this semantic analyzer we give intermediate code generation intermediate code generation now we give the intermediate code generation to code optimizer and uh, from this code optimizer we generate the target code generation which gives us a assembly language program okay now they are saying uh, an integer is converted to floating point form so an integer cannot be converted to floating point form in the lexical analysis because here lexical analyzer is not give, doing any kind of conversions so lexical analyzer is just to give us a stream of tokens remove uh, extra white spaces remove comments but it is not converting an integer to a floating point form so this one option number a is actually wrong option number b parsing is also wrong because parsing is just checking whether the program is correct or not i mean it will create a parse tree it will create a parse tree but it is not converting it but option number c is a semantic analysis in case of semantic analysis phase only in this phase only we convert integer uh, is converted to a floating point number only in this phase we, we uh, perform some action otherwise in the first two phases we do not perform any kind of action like this they are just checking whether the program is correct or not so option number c is matching and option number d is wrong because intermediate code generation actually gives us three address code it gives us three address code um, but it does not uh, change it so correct answer is option number c here next seventh one see one more way i can uh, tell you this one for uh, this uh, c option why it is also correct because here in c option we also create something called uh, give, give something called as actions i mean by looking at certain symbols uh, by looking at the grammar what actions do we perform okay you tell me the name in the comment what kind of actions do we perform what is called as uh, that particular action so just comment that 
in the comment section now the question number 7 they are saying the front end of the typical compiler is constituted of which of the following see what are the phases of a compiler one is lexical analyzer the second phase is syntax analyzer the third phase is semantic analyzer the fourth phase is intermediate code generation the fifth phase is code optimizer seventh phase is target code generation and in eighth we get assembly language program now option number seven here the first option that they are saying is that lexical analyzer syntax and semantic analyzer phases now lexical syntax and semantic they are correct these are the first three phases next they are saying lexical semantic at cone generation here this is wrong because uh, before semantic we have syntax analyzer and before code generation we have intermediate code gen uh, uh, so this for this is correct but uh, before cementing analyzer we have syntax analyzer so they missed one step here so this is wrong option number c is rightly wrong because intermediate code generation is not in the first phase intermediate code generation that comes here which is very later and option d is saying syntax semantic at code optimizer this is also wrong because they missed lexical analyzer and uh, they missed intermediate code generation also so correct answer is option number a question number 8 is saying the limitation of banker algorithm resources distribution are as follows option number a it can handle more than two processes option number b number of resources are static option number c number of processes are static and option d both b and c so let us read out something about banker algorithm by where do we use banker algorithm actually we use banker algorithm in operating system in operating system for resource allocation to see whether uh, we are in the safe state or not okay now i have written some text here uh, for all of you they are saying the banker algorithm has limitations when implemented specifically it needs to know how much of each process a could possibly request but what is the maximum number of resources can a process request number 2 in most system this information is unavailable making it impossible to implement the banker algorithm because they do not know the first the biggest limitation is it should know what is the maximum number of resources maximum number of resources a process can request a process can request okay and making it impossible to implement the banker algorithm also it is unrealistic to assume that number of processes is static so number of processes they are saying is static it is unrealistic okay since it most system the number of processes varies dynamically moreover the requirements of that process will eventually release all its resources when the process terminates is sufficient for the correctness of the algorithm however it is not sufficient for practical system waiting for hours even days for resource to be released is usually not acceptable so number of processes are static this is uh, a limitation of banker's algorithm number of resources are static this is also limitation it can handle more than two processes that is correct but these two are the limitation so both b and c is uh, the correct answer that is option number d is a correct answer for option question number 8 the question number 9 is saying parallelism is related to which of the following see we implement parallelism in pipelining so that we can uh, uh, complete more work in less time so uh, you can also always take a example of henry ford and you can always take example of parallelism in computer architecture organization because it improves the performance of the entire system next for multi processor system and vector system parallelism is involved how i have written a small text here multi processor system is the use of two or more central processing units with a single computer system right so we have more than one cpus and when we give parallelism we can give uh, for any program uh, we can give multiple instructions and we can give the instructions which are not dependent on each other to these two processors and they can execute and we can get the work done parallelly and in much faster pace so this multi processor system actually use parallelism as well as this vector computer also uses parallelism pa uh, pa parallelism you can read here i'm not explaining it because it is very easy and very intuitive so correct answer for this question number 9 is option number d here there is a correct answer because all these three concepts uses the mechanism of parallelism question number 10 is saying which of the following is not related to world wide web option number a is related because it is hypertext markup language web pages are written with hypertext mark markup language option number b is also correct because url uh, is the web address of the website option number c is wrong because uml is not used in www it is something else it is a different concept and option number d is correct because http is hypertext transfer protocol that is also used in world wide web so correct answer here is option number c because it is not related to the world wide web i hope that you understood this first 10 questions in the next video we will discuss the next 10 question of this paper 
and I will also give you the solution of the first paper as well as the second paper as well as the third paper of West Bengal's state eligibility test. A part of West Bengal state eligibility test, I'll also discuss the set exam of various other states. For example, we are going to discuss about Andhra state, Andhra Pradesh, and other states also, and we'll discuss the questions from them. I hope that you enjoyed this session, and thank you so much. Let us meet you. Let me just let us go to the next session where I'm going to discuss more questions of the same question paper. And I hope you enjoyed this session. If you like it, please comment. And thank you so much.